Hey guys and welcome back. Well, in this video we're going to do part two of our modular game asset uh, series and if you missed the first one it's right here. And in this video we're going to look at how to create a window section for the series. Okay, so let's uh, jump in have some fun. Here we go. Okay guys, well we're back in Maya 2017 and we're going to pick up where we left off. Okay, so this is the wall segment that we did last time and this is our reference image. And what we're going to focus on in this video is on this window segment in between. Okay, now uh, we did this section here with the wood paneling and the wall here, and uh, we are going to mix that up a little bit later on by adding some props like uh, you know shelves and pots and pans and paintings and whatnot. But for now, we're going to focus on this window section. Okay. Now we don't have to be identical to this reference. It's just so we have a general idea. Uh, what I do want to do is I want to do these columns in a separate video for the simple reason that that will give us more flexibility when we are building our room. Okay, so what we want to do is make sure that we have the same height as this guy. So we're going to select it. We're going to control D to duplicate, hit W to move that over like so. And just to make sure that we know what's what, we're going to right click, assign new material and just give it a basic Lambert. Okay, so we know what we're talking about. Now, the reason why that is so bright is because I have some lights going on here. I will just uh, turn that off. There we go. So simple gray Lambert. Now, uh, one thing we want to do here is if you look closely at the reference image, you see that this wood section is quite high up where if you look at the window section, the window goes almost all the way down to the floor. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this guy for the simple reason that you never want to repeat things if you don't have to. And we're going to right click at a vertex. We're going to drag select and we're going to push that down to somewhere around here. That kind of looks okay. All right, cool. So now that we have that, it's time to UV this guy, but basically that is, you know, very simple. So we're going to select it. We're going to go to UV and automatic projection. And then we're going to go to UV and UV editor. Now I received a lot of questions why I'm not using the, uh, the updates and the bonus tools and so forth for the simple reason that I find uh, Maya 2017 uh, pretty unstable, especially compared to 2016. And I try to keep things as basic as possible, though I threw out a lot of plugins and so forth. All right. Okay. So I'm going to select this guy. I'm going to right click go to edge and let's see this one down here corresponds with that one. So we're going to go to move. And so we're going to right click at a shell again, move this around, right click edge and we're going to do move. And so again, and then we're going to right click at a shell, go to polygon and uh, layout. And I want this rotated. So I'm going to hit E to rotate. I'm going to hold down the shift as I do so. Actually, that's not working here. I thought it would, but it's fine. Hold a W and push that up and make sure we're in our zero to one space. And we are. Okay, so now we can go up and we're going to go to UV snapshot. We're going to export this UV snapshot to my desktop in this case. And I'll call this window uv for now okay and make sure you have the combination uv in that description okay so i'm going to save that i'm going to leave this at one by one k size aspect ratio is fine uh, jpeg is fine and normal zero to one which is this area is fine as well nothing else going on there so let's hit okay all right so now it's time to pull that into photoshop and get some textures going okay here we go Hey guys, well, we're in Photoshop. As you can see, I opened up the UV snapshot and I prefer to have black lines on a white background. So I'm going to hit uh, control I to invert that. And then I'm going to double click on this layer here to unlock it. So we're free to work and play and so forth. Now, this is a reference. We're not going to use this. So I'm going to add a new layer uh, so I can later on get rid of that UV. Okay. Well, not UV in my model, but the UV here in Photoshop. Okay, so with this layer going on, what I want to do first is add that stone section to the bottom there. Okay, so I'm going to go up to File, Place Embedded. I'm going to look for uh, where to go, right there. 
I'm gonna go to, uh, I think it's in here under textures. Yep, here's the rock that we used last time. I'm gonna push that down. Actually, let's hold down shift, left click and drag to make it a bit smaller first. And I'm gonna push that into that area right here. Like that. And I don't wanna scale it down too much. On my other screen, I have the model that we did last time. And I want the size of the stones to be similar so I don't have huge rocks on one and small on the other, okay? I'm just gonna tweak this a little bit. So uh, let's uh, push that down a little bit like so. Push that up. And tweak it just a little. And hit enter. Now just to be sure, I'm going to zoom in a little bit, hold down my space bar, and you can see that I need to adjust a little bit at this end. So I'm going to hit Control T again, and I'm going to drag it out. Okay, cool. So that's that. Now, what we need to do next is we need to create some wood, okay? Now, depending on whether you want a second to stick out here or not, you can decide to either make that wood or rock. And looking at this, I think I'm just going to bring that up here so it will look like you have a little stone ledge to kind of indicate the thickness of the rocks okay so now that we have that we're going to go out and i'm going to go into file and uh, place embedded again and actually i'll do a new layer i want to have a non-destructive workflow so if i delete one i don't necessarily delete the other so with that layer i'm going to go up to um, place embedded i'm going to take this wood texture right here and I'm going to move that up and place it at the top right there. I'm going to zoom in. And what I want to do is stretch it out to this end, like so, maybe a bit further, just so I got a little bit of overlap, and push it up until I have something that I find acceptable as a top for the wood there. Now it's sticking out a little bit at this end, but rather that than having a gap. And you won't see this as this is gonna be outside of our UV space. So don't worry about that, okay? Now I got this, I am going to zoom out a little bit, hold down the Alt key, left click and drag to duplicate this guy. Then I'm gonna do that again, hold Alt, drag it down. I'm gonna hit Control T to rotate it and hold down Shift as I do so. And as a result, I'll get a 90 degree angle. I can then push it into place right there and bring that down right there. Hit enter. And then one more time, hold down Alt and push that over to this end. Now you can see that this is sticking out a little bit. So we're gonna have a look. And it looks like we have everything in our UV space. And like I said, this is sticking out, but that's fine. Okay. And what we can do next is create a new layer. And we're gonna do a little bit of uh, what I like to call edging or you know, adding some, some detail, okay? So uh, on the new layer, we're gonna take a brush. We're gonna take some black paint. We're gonna go into our brush, make sure we got a soft brush, make sure it's not too large, like so, and then push the opacity down to somewhere around 20%, okay? And then we're gonna go and zoom in, and we're gonna go to these corners where we have these sections going on there, and we're just gonna darken that up a little bit because that is typically where, you know, people have been hammering and whatnot. That is where dirt will collect because you got these little gaps going on. There you go. And what I'll do is I'll just uh, zoom out a bit. I'll push this one up. So we got everything included there. Yep. And then one thing we can do now is we can go in. I'll make my brush slightly smaller. And I'm just going to click in this corner right here. Hold down my shift key and click again right there. And that will create a nice straight line. Do it again. Hold down shift and boom. One here, hold shift, and one here, and hold shift, okay? That gives it a little bit more life to it. 
Then we're going to right click and increase the brush size, make sure it's still nice and small. And then manually, we're going to add just a little down here. Okay. That is most likely the area that will be darkest up here. I don't know, because people have been sitting on it, putting stuff on it, you know, knocking over drinks on it, whatever. Okay. So I'm happy with this so far. So I'm going to select all these layers now once I'm happy with it. And I no longer want to go in and change. Otherwise, I would keep it open. So I have my non-destructive workflow. But I'm happy with this. I'm going to merge these layers. OK. So what's next? What we're going to do is we're going to go in and we are going to create kind of a backdrop, if you will. Like, let's call it the glass. OK. So we're going to do a new layer. We're going to do something that is fairly bright we're going to go in and take our selection tool actually let's take all take our polygonal selection tool and we're going to zoom in a bit we're going to start in this corner right there go to there 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 and there and now we have our marching ants hopefully you can see that I'm going to take a brush again. We're going to make this one fairly large, yeah, maybe even more than that. Make sure it's a very soft brush and the opacity is still about 20% and the color looks okay. So we're just going to start to go over this area and you don't want to cover everything equally. That's exactly the point that we don't do that. So now that we have this, we're going to go to select and deselect to get rid of the marching ants. Okay. So that's all good. We're going to create a new layer. And with that layer, we're going to start to put in the window frame, right? So once again, brush, in this case, a hard brush. We're going to make it nice and small. Maybe some, maybe slightly bigger than that. That's about right. Hard brush. Uh, we're going to bump that opacity up. Not 100%, but let's do 75 or so. And then what we're going to do is we're going to switch our color to black. We're going to start somewhere around here and we're actually going to start on top of our wood. Okay. So we're going to click once. We're going to hold in our shift key and we're going to try to be as level as possible. Not too bad. Okay. And now that we have that, we're going to go up to our selection tool, hold down the alt key and we're going to bring that down and you kind of need to decide how many you want. You don't want it to look like a jail. So we'll do one here. I'll repeat that. And as you get to the right distance, it will indicate that. I'll do that again. Come on, where's my indicator? There it is. I'll do that once more. And now it seems that I need to have all of them come down a bit. Okay. So I'm going to select these layers. So one, two, three. Well, maybe not just yet. Hang on. I'll explain why. Okay. So I'm going to do Alt and select one more time. Let's see how that works, by the way. Yeah, that could work. Okay. One more time. Hold on Alt. And in this case, we are going to uh, rotate it. So we're going to hit Control T to rotate. Looks like I've got two things selected here. Hang on. Deselect. Control T. And I'm going to hold down the shift key while I do that. So it will snap. I'm going to bring it in here and then drag that bottom down like so. Well into my wood frame here. Hit enter. Hold down the alt key once again. Let's do one here and we'll do one more. And do one here and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to select these three and merge layers so now I can kind of move them like so and then I'll turn them off and I'll select these layers so it starts with this guy so it's a layer three and all of its copies. Okay. One, two, 
three, four, five, and layer three itself. Right click merge layers. So now I can move them up if I like, and then I can turn this layer back on and we're good. Now, when I'm happy with this, I can select both and go into merge layers. So now the whole thing is one frame. Okay, it controls you to go back. And now obviously I want my window frame to be behind the wood and not in front of it. Okay, so let's uh, drag that down and drag it down again. And let's see what is what. Let's get this in order. Uh, let me see. Okay, this is my glass and I'll just... Uh, Rename that. Hey guys, well, sorry for the short interruption. I just wanted to let you guys know that my channel sponsor, uh, Dogwood Gaming, they did a complete uh, overhaul and update on their Ashes of Kanaka game. Now, they released that game in April of this year, but their motto is uh, by gamers for gamers. So what they did is they invited a lot of uh, gamers to provide them with feedback on what they like and don't like about the game, what they wanted to see change and so forth. And they did that, okay? So they uh, released uh, the new version yesterday, a lot of cool changes. And as a big, big thank you to all those gamers out there, they are giving you 30% discount on Steam, okay? So uh, I'll put the link below, check them out, okay? Let's go back to our tutorial, here we go. This is my frame. And I'll call that my window, okay? So uh, let's see, my um, glass should be here. Okay, I know what the problem is. All right, so I'm gonna turn this off, turn that off. On my window right here, I'm gonna do a polygonal selection. This is not a PNG, it's a, uh, a JPEG. And as a result, I have this white background here that I do not want. So I select that and I delete that and now you've got that checkered background. So now I want to turn these back on. I should be able to move my frame behind my window and as you see it's working. And then my glass behind my frame. And then we're going to go up to the select to get rid of that. The only issue there is that you see this thin white line at the edges. I don't really want that. So the way I can fix that is take my frame and my glass and we're going to merge layers. Hit control T to uh, scale them, hold down shift, slightly drag that and then bring it in. And hit enter and we'll uh, fix that the rest of it in uh, substance painter okay so when we're all happy with that we're going to select these two merge layers and then our base diffuse is done okay now um we can yeah we'll do that in, uh, in substance painter okay fine we can now uh, save this out as our diffuse so file save as and i'll just call this diffuse window I'll save it out as a JPEG. I'll just save it on my desktop for now. And then we're gonna go in to filter 3D generate normal map based on this. And we're gonna tweak the details a little bit. So let's see, we have a detail scale here that we want to have quite high because it's a nice effect for the wood and so forth. You can uh, invert if you want, but I, you know, don't do that. This looks fine. Uh, let's see, you can repeat UVs and so forth. We don't need any of that. So let's see if we want to go this high. Yeah, why not? Okay, so I'm gonna hit okay. There we go. And all right, and all right. So we got all that. I'm gonna go up to file and save as, and I'll call this my normal. So we'll call this uh, window normal. Save it on the desktop as well. Hit okay, and there we go. 
So now we can go back into uh, Maya. And we'll do a quick preview of how this looks, okay? So we're gonna go to object mode. We're gonna go to right click, assign new material, Lambert, check a box, file, folder, desktop, uh, window, diffuse, where to go? Diffuse window, that's fine too. There you go. And then we can go in, select it again, go to our Lambert, go to the bot map section, check it box, file. We can not use it as a bump, but as a tension space normal. And then we're gonna go into the, uh, we're gonna bring this down first to somewhere thing like this. Go to file, folder, window normal, Open that up. And we kind of need to mimic the look that we already have. Now, don't be fooled. This looks very dark, but that's based on lighting. Once it's rendered, it will look totally different. So let's tweak this uh, bump intensity a little bit. Okay. And just have a look here. We don't want to go too crazy on it. Maybe let's do 0 0.3. All right, okay, so uh, we saw how that looked so far. We need to do some tweaks in uh, Substance Painter. I also want my ambient occlusion and so forth. So what I'm gonna do next is I got these two files. I'm gonna select my object. I'm gonna go to File and Export Selection. Actually, let's delete our history first. And go to Modify and Free Transformation. And then I can go to export selection and I'll save it on my desktop. I'll call this window wall OBJ and let's export that. Okay, so let's uh, jump into Substance Painter. Here we go. Okay, guys, well, we're in Substance Painter. Let's go to file and new and I'm going to leave this at PBR Metal Rough. As for a mesh, I'm going to go to select. Let's go to my desktop and here's my window wall OBJ. Um, let's see, I'm gonna leave this at direct X. 1K size is fine. I am going to go to add maps that I already created uh, and they are my window normal and my diffuse window. And I'm gonna hit okay. Now, there is my not so complicated model and that's the whole point it's a low poly game asset and what i need to do is i need to bake the initial maps now you'd probably say what for there's nothing there yet but these will be placeholders and i'll show you we're gonna hit bake textures i'm gonna leave all of this alone one case size no high poly nothing going on there just gonna hit bake the maps what you'll see is that actually some stuff is going on most importantly, you just saw the ambient occlusion map being added, okay? Based on a curvature map, uh, uh, Substance Painter can calculate the ambient occlusion and you see that little dark edge there and that's exactly what I want, okay? And as we move forward and add more detail to this, these details will be added to the maps down here, okay? Cool, so now that we have that, it's time to bring in uh, the texture that we created. So I'm gonna go to File and uh, Import Resources, Add Resources. I want my um, Window Normal and my Diffuse Window. Hit Open. I'm gonna have to tell uh, the system what this is. This is a texture and so is this. And I want these to use only in the current session. And I'm gonna hit Import. Now, as I do that, and I'll just go to view and reset the user interface, you will see that they now have been added right here, okay? Now, before I can add these to my object, I got one texture set going on here and one layer. I need to add a new fill layer right there. Now, with that layer selected, I got a bunch of options here, and what I wanna do first is I wanna go into my color, so I'm gonna turn off height, roughness, metalness, and normal, just my color right here, and I'm gonna drag and drop my diffuse onto that, not onto the color, but onto the text where it says base color, like so. 
Now, this looks totally off, but no worries. That's because the UV scale is set to three and we're gonna set that to one, okay? So click on that little thing, change that to one, and click on this little thing, and that is now one as well, okay? And when we do that, we have our uh, map on our window, okay? So how do we get our normal map in? Well, we're gonna turn off color for now and all the other stuff, we're gonna turn height back on. We're gonna take our normal map, we're gonna drag and drop it onto that height column right there, like so. You can see that that has been added, it looks okay. We're gonna turn back on color, roughness, metalness, and normal, and let's have a look. All right, well, you can see that there is very distinct uh, height information going on in our wood panel there and it looks okay now it's kind of shiny and I don't really want that so I can go in and either turn off the metalness and normal here or I can go to the rough tab and I can increase the roughness and as I do that you will see that that shine will go down you can leave a little bit in but that's okay right Okay, so now that we have all this, um, I'll do a quick single render just on this thing alone in Substance Painter, and then we'll export our textures, okay? So we're gonna go to uh, Mode, Rendering, and uh, let's see, we'll choose a suitable environment. So instead of Panorama, I don't know, this looks kind of good. We'll go in, we will, um, actually this is very bright. It's supposed to be a fairly dark scene. So let's see what else we got. Oh, we'll leave it like that, it's fine. We're gonna increase the number of samples a little bit. And again, I'm just gonna run through this quickly. Maybe one of these studio light setups. Mm. I'm gonna go with this one, okay. So we have that. Um, I want to have a solid color as a background instead of this whole image going on here. I'm always having trouble finding that little checkbox where it allows me to do that. Uh, clear color right there. There you go, okay. So it's rendering right now, but it's doing fine, okay. And there you have it. Well, just to give you an idea of what this looks like in Substance Painter, but we're not quite done yet. We're gonna to go to Mode and Painting. So we're gonna go back. And like I said, we got that little edge going on there. So what I wanna do is uh, create a new layer. Not a fill layer, just a regular layer. And go to Brushes. Get something that is fairly soft, like this uh, cotton thing. We're gonna go in and uh, go to our brush and go to our color, change color white to black. Then we're gonna go in and let's see, we're gonna tweak the size of the brush, make that fairly large. We're gonna push the flow down a little bit so it's not too visible. And then we'll give this a try. Now I want this to be positioned straight in front of the camera. so. While I hold down Alt and rotate it around, I'm gonna hold Shift so it will snap, okay? And then I can go in and I can kind of grunge that up a little, okay? Now, you don't have to go nuts on that. I'm just showing you what I mean here, okay? And for some reason, because it's medieval, I think, oops, I think it's supposed to be dirty, grungy, whatnot. But it's also a nice way to kind of fix issues, if you will. You get the idea, right? Okay. Alrighty. So let's zoom out a bit. So let's say that this is our completed window. Okay, we'll do a little bit down here. You know, just go nuts on that. Okay, so what you do next is you go up to uh, File and Export Textures. 
Now you kind of need to choose what you want to do with this. Well, I'm going to go with uh, the basically default PBR Metal Rough uh, right there. I'm going to go into configuration, uh, PBR Metal Rough. This one is fine for me. It has my base color. I'm metallic, normal and height, so that's all good. So go back to export and I'm going to select uh, where I want to save it. Kind of important. Let's go to my folder and let's create a new folder. And we're going to call that window wall. And we're going to create a new one in there. And we'll call that substance painter textures. And that's the one we're going to use. And we're going to click on export. And it's already done. Cool. So now that that is all said and done, we can jump back into Maya, apply them, and I'll show you what it looks like. Hang on. Okay, this is our test texture that we had. Okay, we're gonna right click, assign new material, do a Lambert, just get rid of everything. Then we're gonna go back in, we're gonna plug our diffuse in here, file, folder, and on our desktop, we have our medieval assets. We have our window wall. We got our substance painter textures. This is my base color and it looks off, but no worries. There we go. And then we're going to select this again. We're going to go to our bump mapping, check it box. Once again, file and let's do 0 0.3 again. We'll go into our file folder and let's use our normal. Okay, now this is what that looks like. Um, again, you know, uh, based on the lighting, this might look off, but uh, I'll do a, uh, a render so you can see it well. I'm just gonna push this together to give you an idea. Control D on this guy, W to move that over. Let's do that without any overlap. And again, you know, this is quick and dirty, so take your time to do it properly, but this is how that would look like. Okay, I'll, I'll do a render. I'll stick that in the thumbnail so you can see what it looks like when it's rendered in daylight and so forth, okay? So that's all there's to it for uh, this video. And in the next video, we're gonna look at, you know, creating some uh, paintings, some shelves and so forth to uh, make this look a little bit more like an actual room, okay? So see you guys then, bye. Well, thanks for watching, and before you go, please hit that MH button to subscribe, okay? See you guys next time. Bye.